addiction. You know, you can forget about heroin and alcohol and the sex and all these other addictions that people go to the 12 step groups for. They really, you know, we could form a support group here for linear time addictions, anonymous. You know, <laughs> egoholics. Egoholics. Which would be, right. Linear time aholics. Uh, you know. <laughs> Hi, my name is so-and-so, and I believe I'm a linear being. <laughs> hey, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I believe I'm a linear being. And I believe, right? It, it could start off with that, or I used to say for course groups, um, people could go around the room, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I have a perceptual problem. <laughs> well, and they, because everybody needs to be reminded. That's, you could start out every group with just that. You know, you come in, you take your coat off, you sit down, Maybe you're thinking about your relationship problem, or your work, how boring work is, or you don't like how rainy the weather is, or you know your, your finances are in terrible condition, or something. And you, but really, you need to. Your mind's just focused on the gap. You know, really, that's, it's just swirling in the gap of unreal thoughts. And really, what you need is you need to come in and start to come clean. Hi, my name is so and so, and I have a perceptual problem because. How can you let go of a perceptual problem unless you first admit you have a perceptual problem? How does an alcoholic let go of the drinking problem, which really is just a symptom of just self-criticism, self-doubt and judgment, and unworthiness? The drinking is just a mechanism to try to drown out, a survival mechanism. How do I not think about this horrific world, some people, you know, turn to drinking to divert their attention away from the world. Some people go to movies and get into other kinds of escapism. There's many ways to try to numb out or escape the, the intensity of the horrific sense of this world. But, you have to first come to an admission that you have a perceptual <coughs> problem, and that will will be the first major step in releasing your mind from the gap. If you, first of all, if you're perceiving a world that doesn't even exist, and that's what we call hallucination in psychology and psychiatry. You're hallucinating, you're psychotic, that's a break from reality, right? And heaven is reality, so if you, if you think you're somewhere other than heaven, that's a psychotic break. So you're hallucinating, you're psychotic, you're schizophrenic. You're schizophrenic too because that's, that's a split mind. You hear multiple voices. <laughs> we all, we've been hearing a lot of multiple voices. We call them people. It doesn't even, you don't have to be like a beautiful mind. You, know, you saw that movie where you had these imaginary characters. We've got a lot, we've got seven billion imaginary characters, and that's a lot of voices. And, if we're honest, most of us would say that, that you know, we kind of, we suffer from multiple personality disorder. You know, do you act the same around your parents as you do other people? You change completely like a chameleon. If mom and dad are around, that's multiple personality. You, you completely exhibit a whole new personality when you're around mom and dad than you are other people. You know, or around your family, you know. You know maybe you've layered on that people pleasing nice and thick like molasses and you know, and you really try to be a good little boy, a good little girl around mom and dad. Then you go on the internet and you, you curse people, you know, you can hide behind the, the internet so you can curse people, you can go in chat rooms, take on a, an avatar, you know, do all kinds of things. You can go and go in virtual worlds online, you know, and fly and do all kinds of things. But around mom and dad, it's like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I said I'll do it. You know, because you don't want to upset, you don't want to rock the boat. Besides, it's mom and dad, you know, they seem to bring you into this world. You, know, you better do what they want, you know, and it's all this people-pleasing stuff packed in there too. So you can see, you have to start to, to come to an admission that you have a perceptual problem, that you're perceiving a fragmented world, that, you know, you don't really see things exactly as they are, that you actually need help. You need perception training. 
And how could you accept the help of perception training if you haven't first admitted you have a perceptual problem? If you, if you are so convinced that your perceptual linear world is fine and dandy, it's just fine and dandy, it's good, how are you going to be open to help to heal it if you already believe that it's good <laughs> the way it is, you know, in linear terms? So this, this song and what we're talking about and the movies that we'll show and so forth are, are all to just be reminders that, that really linear time has never satisfied you and it's never, you've never been really content with linear time. You know? They used to tell me, take the good with the bad. What kind of advice is that? <laughs> That's terrible. Take the good with the bad. I don't want either one. Is it, if God didn't create the good and the bad of the world, why would you settle for take the good with the bad? Make the best of it. Make the best of what? Linear time. How do you make the best of linear time? Try to distract yourself because eventually you're going to die. Oh, thank you, that's very optimistic. Thank you, make the best of it. Oh, I'll remember that one. Make the best of it, you know. Just think of the most common things that we're told in this world and it's people like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, I'll, I'll remember that, you know. I'll, I'll try to do that. You know, we have to learn to forgive the world. We have to learn to first admit that we have, have a problem going on with all this linearity before we can go vertical. Before someone who goes to 12-step program for Alcoholics Anonymous, we'll call it, if they go into Al Alcoholics Anonymous and they sit there and they said, I'm not going to per really participate, I'm just going to be an observer. I'm not going to participate in this. They got these 12 steps, I'm not going to do them. I'm forced to be here. The court ordered me to come here, so I'm just going to just sit here and observe. And the other one else says, hi, my name's so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. You think they're going to participate in that? No, I could admit they're an alcoholic. They don't want to admit, because part of them is attracted to the misery of, of the drinking, and they, they don't even want to admit that they have a drinking problem. Uh, that's why we have Al-Anon. We have groups for families of people where there's so much denial going on that nobody wants to admit that there's a problem. All right, I drink. I drink a lot. I don't know. Okay, I pass out from time to time. <laughs> okay, I shot a few, a few people when I drunk. But, I mean, it's just, it's not really a problem, you know. It's it, the, 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 the denial mechanism can be can grow quite strong. I can stop any time. I can stop any time. <laughs> yes, you know, those are the things that go on and on and on. And yet, the first thing, of course, comes that you have to admit that that there's a problem, that that you're powerless, you've been powerless over this problem, and you need help. And you can call it whatever kind of help you want. They don't even call it your higher power, whatever you want to call it. They don't even say you have to call it God. You can call it whatever. I need help from something. And that's what we have to do when you have a linear perception problem. You have to come to an admission that it has been a problem and that you need to have help to get out of it. You need a higher power help to get out of this linear perception problem. And to me, that's exactly, you know, you're saying, I can't manage this anymore. I've tried my best. I've been using all these defense mechanisms. Look at that. Okay, now I've been able to survive. My body's surviving. I, I've learned how to work and earn money and spend money. And I know how to eat and I know how to defecate. And okay, all right, I got the body thing down. I'm, I'm surviving as a body. And the Jesus and the Holy Spirit are going, you think that's an accomplishment? Mm -hmm. To survive as a body? That's, you're in the gap. You're, you're perceiving your whole universe is in this tiny little spot of darkness. That's, we need mind training to go higher and higher. You need to learn how to be a miracle worker. You need to learn how to think in miraculous ways to lift yourself out of this linear, perceived linear darkness. And that's what that's why we're all here, because we need new tools. We've been using the other tools to survive as a human being on planet Earth. And meanwhile, we've got a soul sickness going on, 
because our soul is not at home here and it's yearning like E.T. to go home. You know, that's what E.T. wanted to do. He, he, he was never satisfied on earth. You know, he finally, he, he just says, phone home, phone home. He, he kept telling the little boy. And the little boy finally joined with him and said, okay, let's get this done. And, you know, took off, took off with, instead of probing E.T., he took off with him to try to find a way to get him home. And then his little bicycle took off in the air. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. If we are willing enough to go for home, the true home, our little bicycles <coughs> will go up into the air, you know. Our, whatever means we have will, will be lifted up towards this goal, because that's really the only goal that we, is worthy of our holy mind, is to go home, back to heaven.